Today, let's talk about posture, rounded shoulders, and what we can do at home to help alleviate pain and get us a little bit more upright. I call them train tracks. The anatomical name is rhomboids. It's a major player in maintaining posture, keeping your shoulders pinned back, chest out, and torso upright. It's not the only muscle group that will cause rounded shoulders and poor posture. This topic is big, and we could do a whole series on it. But we're starting with the train tracks because it's the most common denominator and it's something we can do for our partners tonight. When this muscle is weak, it'll cause the wing bones at the back, your scapula, to droop forward and round out your shoulders. If you spend your days sitting at a desk, it's likely that your seated position is causing the problem. Holding a child can also cause the issue. And being a gym rat will do the same, but in the opposite way. Some of us favor the aesthetically pleasing muscles at the front here. I certainly do. Chest, shoulders, serratus anterior. This pulls us forward. And if the train tracks are left unchecked, we're unbalanced. So why would we massage weak muscles? Wouldn't we prefer to train them instead and strengthen them up to pull them back into place? Well, the answer is yes, we should, but Weak and untrained muscles will collect adhesions. The fascia will be dry, tight, and constricting of muscles. Sometimes when you massage over these muscles, you actually feel the dryness, the grittiness. It'll feel like guitar strings. You might even hear the crunchiness as you go over it. Blood flow will be minimal, and all this can cause pain. Let's start with some massage techniques. Get those muscles loosened up and some blood flow moving. Then we'll take a closer look at the muscles and deep dive into some of the anatomy and finish off with some exercises. A great place to start is to use an open hand technique. Keep your palms down and fingertips down and contour your hands to your partner's body. Keep a thin oil base and focus on rhythm rather than deep tissue. A thin oil base while using a larger hand surface will generate heat, increasing blood flow and inspiring relaxation. It's a light, comfortable release. A little deeper, although still comfortable. Use your fingertips to emphasize the massage stroke. This is really nice. One of my favorites, it's a heavy massage yet a comfortable release. I love this combination. Make sure you've warmed up the muscles first before going in this deep. The focal point is in the heel of your palm. Remember the rule, the deeper you massage, the slower you go and always wash out deep tissue with relaxation strokes. Okay, even deeper. Make sure your palm is aligned with the train tracks. Stack your hands and sink in. Keep your arms straight and your torso straight. Use body weight and sink into the train tracks. This lets you massage for extended periods of time without exhausting you. Look how slow I'm moving. Watch carefully, there is movement. It doesn't look like much to us, but they feel every micro movement. This is easy to do, but taxing on your thumbs. Use circular motion, work your way up. There are many variations of thumb techniques. This is just one of them. You can transition to both thumbs on the one side if you like. The rhomboids are a large, strong muscle. The origin is at your spine and the muscle inserts into the scapula or wing bone. The train tracks have one job, to pull the scapula closer to the spine. Think of pulling things closer to your body, like holding a baby is a good example. You can see why I call them the train tracks. When you massage over these fibers, it feels like you're driving over train tracks. Sometimes it'll sound like it. It's common to find knots along the ridge here, close to the scapula. These fibers can feel gritty and dry like guitar strings. Sometimes the texture will feel like thick bands. You'll visually see your fingers snapping over them. The muscles underneath also support posture, but not to do with rotating the shoulders forward. Massaging the train tracks will affect the muscles above and below. Let's do one step further. This is interesting. There's a muscle inside the wing bone. We're looking at the back, rotate around, and now we're looking at the chest. And from here, it's impossible to get to the muscle. I mean, there's the heart, there's the lungs, there's a rib cage, and the muscle's all the way at the back, but it's facing us. But there's something cool about this, we can access it from the back. When the arm is rotated back, it releases tension on the train tracks, which allows you to wing 
that scapula upwards and get in underneath. There are a lot of knots here and it feels absolutely amazing. And this muscle does have an effect on rounding those shoulders. Now that we know what muscles we're working on and we've learned some massage techniques, let's talk about exercises. I think posture, like I know, posture needs more than just massage. We need to strengthen those muscles. I'm a gym rat, I love it. I'm in the gym every day, minimum of two hours. I can't get enough. I'm not a personal trainer though. I will show you a couple of workouts that I do for the back, both at the gym and at home. For you guys that know me, I travel lots, yeah? And this travels with me everywhere. Super handy, especially when you're working on the back. There are things that you can do on the floor to help strengthen the train tracks at the back. So let's go through this, but just remember, I'm not a personal trainer, do your own research. There's lots of really good credited trainers on YouTube that are way better than I am. Go check them out. I bought this thing for, I don't know, $20 maybe? It was an eBay purchase. I bought it when we went into lockdown and I used it every day. No need to overthink this. If you've never exercised, start light. Palms up, arms out. Visualize squeezing your shoulder blades together. I like this. It also opens up the chest to stretch out tight muscles at the front. And of course, we're working the train tracks or rhomboids at the back. Over time, you can increase the amount of bands used. Without equipment, you can try this exercise. Maybe we call it a stretch. I don't know, maybe it's in between. Arms and shoulders are locked into place. Torso fully stretched upwards. And now collapse and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Open up and push your chest as high as you can. This will stretch out the train tracks. And now drop and squeeze your shoulders together. This is something you can practice right now. This is called the bent over row. If the gym intimidates you, I have some advice. People care more about themselves than you. Unless you're dressed for attention, people won't notice you. Watch what others do. If it looks good, copy them, but with light weights. There's no need to rush. Lifting heavy will cause more problems. Your technique doesn't need to be perfect in the beginning. You just need to start and stay consistent. Technique can be cleaned up later, and when you do, you can then increase your weights. This is called the seated row. It's just like the last exercise, but we're in a seated position. All rows do a similar action. Focus on squeezing the shoulder blades together. Aim to have your scapula touching each other. And if it's too easy to get your scapula to touch, increase your weight a little bit. Melters, you have a detailed explanation on how to massage train tracks inside your Melt account. Go practice those, refresh, do them all over again until it feels comfortable. Remember, this is just one piece of the posture puzzle. I want you to let me know in the comments below if you want to keep going with this series and start talking about other muscles like pec minor is a big muscle that can cause rounded shoulders when it's over tight. If you want to see how to release that, let me know in the comments. We'll continue working on this series together. You guys, get your hands on each other because it's so good for you. I'll see you in the next episode. Ciao.